amen? To build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. Mark chapter 9, verse number 14. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, it, sta it states, And when, when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitudes answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and foameth, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, and they should, they, that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Amen. We're talking from the subject matter of training your will to believe. Training your will to believe. Amen. Because the will of man is the most dominant authority over human affairs in the earth. Amen. So, so, so even God would not violate your will. God made you a free moral agent with the ability to choose what you want in life. And so God says, I am God, the almighty, and I would not violate your will because the will of man is the most uh, uh, th dominant authority of a man's life, whether you could choose for yourself. Amen. And so we also said, we also said, go to Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11. After salvation, you and I do not need another salvation message. Amen. Now, I did not say that a salvation message was not needed. But you, as a believer who has accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life, you do not need another salvation message. What we need to do is learn how to use our faith, amen, in order to please God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 6. Look what it says. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For those that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that what? Diligently seek him. So after salvation, God gives each one of us a measure of faith. And you hear pastors say, you know, we're building faith, we're building bridges, we're building lives. Well, well, that's part of the process because God has dealt to each one of us a measure of faith. Okay? And it's what you do with that faith that really matters. Now, last week, we began to talk about the criteria that we use. And I, and I began to share with you about uh, 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 a situation that, that I had in my life where my faith failed. Faith doesn't fail, but I, my faith failed at this moment, at that moment. Uh, two years ago, we had a kingdom project that we were believing God for. And uh, I thought I had the faith for it, man. I, I mean, I got the call and, and, and it, was, it was what we were believing for. But at that moment, I put a false criteria on God, a flawed criteria. Because I told God, unless this happens, that can't happen. And so, so, so after, when it, when it didn't come to pass, I went to God. I said, well, God, what happened? He said, you did that. You put a criteria that I didn't even, even put on you. You took the God factor out. Amen. And I had to repent because God, I was, I, I'm believing I'm this man of faith. And here I am putting a criteria that God didn't even put on it. Amen. And that's how many people do in life. They have a flawed criteria, amen, where they look at the stereotypes and statistics and, and say, because of this, this cannot happen. Who says that you have to have a degree to, to be the owner of a business? Who said that? God didn't tell you that. God didn't, God didn't put a criteria that you have to have a degree to have wealth and riches in your house. 
The Bible says that that's in, in Psalms 1, 112, that he says that wealth and riches shall be in your house. He did not say because you have a degree. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we got to stop putting these criteria on, on God and look at the word of God as the final authority for our lives. Amen. Now, go to, go to uh, Luke chapter 17. Today, I really have three points. One major point and three sub points. But I'm telling you right now, I'm only going to get to one sub point. Amen. I'm going to give you the three, but then on next week, I'm going to finish the other two. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> because many people ask the question, how can I increase my faith? Amen. Anybody, any, anybody need the, their faith increased? Amen. You always ask the question, well, how can I increase my faith? Okay. Well, the disciples ask the same question. Luke chapter 17. Look at verse number five. Luke chapter 17, verse number five. Look what he says. And the apostles said unto the Lord, what they said, increase our faith. Now, now, if the apostles, those who were around Jesus all that time, amen, had to ask him, Lord, how can we increase our faith? Surely we who are here today need to ask the same questions. How can we increase our faith? So, so my points are this. My first point on how you can increase your faith is to increase the saturation of the word of God. Number two. To increase your faith, you can increase your faith through meditation on situations. Amen. And then number three, the third point I'm going to make is you increase your faith through the impartation of the spirit. Okay. Through the word of God. Watch this now. Through meditation and through the impartation of the spirit. Now, today we're only going to deal with how to increase your faith by the saturation of the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, now go over to uh, Deuteronomy chapter eight, Deuteronomy chapter eight, Deuteronomy chapter number eight. You cannot have faith, man, in anything that God has for us if we don't have his word. Amen. Amen. Because faith begins where the will of God is clearly known. Amen. Watch this now. I'll say that again. Faith begins. Where the word of God is clearly known. When I know what God's word says, I can establish my faith. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter number 8. Look at verse number 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 3. Look what he says. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, doth man live. So God began to tell the children of Israel that, that listen, don't, don't just look at the manna from heaven as what you need to sustain your life. Because that only lasts for a day. You don't live just by what I give you for your flesh. But you need to live by every word that comes out of my mouth. Amen. Because what I speak. The Bible says when God speaks, his word is spirit and it's life. Amen. And so as we get the word of God into our hearts and into our life, watch this now. It builds us up on the inside. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Look at verse number 17. Romans chapter 10, verse number 17. See, the saturation is accomplished through the repetition of hearing and speaking that causes believing to take place. So if I'm going to saturate my heart and saturate my life to increase my faith, watch this now. I have to hear the word of God over and over again. And then I have to learn how to speak that word. Amen. Because that's what causes believing to take place. Because you will believe what you speak. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17. So then faith, what? Coming by what? Hearing and what? Hearing by the word of God. Okay, go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm trying to show you that in order to increase your faith, you have to have the word of God. <clears throat> now, here's, here's, here's the thing, the good news about this church. It doesn't matter who ministers at this church. They will always give you the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. Look at verse number 13. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse number 13. Look what he says here. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, 
after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Look at the, look at the, 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 the transition. He said, you trust it because you heard the word. Okay. And then after you heard the word, you believe. Amen. See, you cannot trust unless you have the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And look, look, and watch this now. Your believing goes to another level after you keep on hearing the word of God and hearing the word of God and hearing the word of God. That's why he says faith cometh by hearing. That's why you, it never gets old to hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. There sometimes I go back and listen to a lesson from 2001. And man, boy, I was, I mean, that word was so good. I'm like, my God, who is that young preacher like that? Amen. Now, now here, here's, here's why hearing the word of God is so important. Amen. And getting the word into our hearts is so important. Because number one, it's going to empty you of excuses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Bible says that we are without excuse. Amen. And so once I hear the word of God, I'm accountable for my actions. Amen. So, so, so every husband, watch this now, who hears the word on how to be a good husband, like God says, you are without excuse on how you treat your wife. Glory to God. Amen. And every wife who hears the word on how she should submit to her husband, amen, as unto the Lord, she is responsible for that word. Amen. So ain't no sense of you getting upset with him and, and, and snapping your head and throwing your weave all around. No, 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 sister. Amen. You, 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 you're accountable now to the word that you heard. Glory to God. And every young person who hears the word on how to honor their parents, you are held responsible. Amen. Now, you might not like what your parents do and what your parents say, but you still need to honor them. Why? Because the Bible says there is a promise given to you that there will be long life. Glory to God. Amen. Not only that, but when I get the word of God, it empty me of excuses, but it also equipped me with the resources that I need for my task that God gives me. See, one of the things that God does is whenever God gives us an assignment, watch this now, he equips us. Amen. And so now you, if God gives you an assignment, he gives you the ability to accomplish that assignment. Amen. The next thing that God does, go to, I want you to see this one. Go to Jude, Jude 20, Jude 20. The next thing that, that uh, by hearing the word of God on a consistent basis, it will energize me, watch this now, with grace and power to obey God. Amen. Look, there are times when I am super tired, but because I got this word on the inside of me, it energizes me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Watch this now. Jude 20. Watch this now. Jude 20. Look what he says. Jude 20, watch this now. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, watch this now, praying in the Holy Spirit. Watch this now. Now, how many of you ever had a dead battery? You ever had a dead battery uh, in your car, in your car, in your car? You had to have somebody come jump you off, right? <clears throat> what happens in that process? See, if you have a dead situation, a dead battery, and somebody else have some power, you get some cables and hook them up to your dead situation. Well, when I read the word of God, amen, and look at some dead areas in my life, once I hook myself up with the word of God, it charges that area up. Amen. And so that's how you build yourself up, amen. You energize yourself with the word of God. Glory to God, amen. Then watch this now. Then, then once you start getting this revelation, it enriches your life. Oh, my God. You, it enriches your life. And then it enlarges your territory when you get, your, get the word of God. Amen. Now, here's what I have to do. If I'm going to get the word, amen, and not just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word, what must I do? Go to Hebrews, Hebrews. Chapter number four, Hebrews chapter four, Hebrews chapter four. Now, every now and then, Kim, I like to, I like to bake, you know, I haven't, I haven't baked the cake in a, in a, in a while, but every now and then I, I like to get in the kitchen and, and bake a cake, you know, 
whether it's a strawberry, a lemon, or a spice cake, you know, I, I, I get in there. I, I'm, I'm pretty good at it too. I'm pretty good. I, I, I gotta tap, tap myself on the back on that one. I'm pretty good. If you ever ate one of my cakes, you'd be like, Pastor, can you make another one? Amen. Just like, just see, see, some of y'all were surprised on Wednesday night when y'all ate my my, my noodle dish. Y'all were like, Pastor, this is pretty good. Look, Sister Mary Jane, says, yeah, Pastor, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, and Aline, I got your message too. Aline sent me a message saying, look, next time, Pastor, you put a little bit on the side and don't make it so spicy. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I didn't even put my foot in that one. Because normally everything is red. <laughs> and look, me and Keisha be like, y'all can't handle this? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> See, she her daddy, she, she really her daddy's child. But, uh, uh, but, but, but every now and then I like to bake a cake. But, but I like to use the recipe box. I like to use Betty Crocker. Because Betty Crocker, her recipes always come to pass. She, she is almost like God. Whatever God said, it surely come to pass. All you got to do is follow the instructions. Betty says, if you get two large eggs, a third cup of water, uh, uh, and a third cup of oil, and you get all my ingredients and put it in a bowl, mix it up real well, and then Put it in a pan. If you got a, a light color pan, it's going to take these, these many minutes. And if you have a dark, dark color pan, it's going to take that many minutes. And then put it in the oven. And at the appropriate time, you can pull it out and you will have a cake. Amen. And it will be satisfactory to everybody that eats it, especially mine. And then I just, I just wait on it, just let it cool down a little bit. And then, then put the icing on top of it. Well, watch this now. Something happens to the egg something happens to the oil and something happens to the water and mix that I don't really comprehend from a natural perspective, but it all blends together and becomes one. Yeah. Where I cannot distinguish between the egg, the water, the oil, and the mix. It all blends together, right? That's how our faith should be with the word of God. That when we get the word of God in our hearts and mix it with the word, our faith and mix it with the word, watch this now, the devil can't tell if it's the word or our faith that, that, that manifests the promise. Amen? Amen. You're in Hebrews chapter 4. Look at verse number 2. Hebrews chapter 4. Let me read the scripture. Verse number 2. Watch this now. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So I just can't hear the word of God. Well, man, I, I'm not in, in how, there, I, I just came back. I just came back. I was off the screen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can see that. I can see that. Amen. But, 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 but watch this now. I got to learn how to mix my faith with the word of God. Amen. So that it's so blended that when the devil comes up at me, he don't know whether he's dealing with God or dealing with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Second thing I got to do is I got to guard the wor word in my heart. Amen. Guard the word in my heart. Proverbs chapter 4 talks about guarding the word in your heart. Amen. See, because there, there will always be those who will try to steal the word from you. Yeah. He'll try to steal the word from you because Mark says it this way. You can get into an emotional environment and the word is preached and the devil will come immediately and snatch that word from you. Amen. So that's why you got to guard the word. You cannot allow the enemy to come in and talk you out of what God promised you. Amen. That's Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 20 and through 23. Amen. Just take some notes because I'm on a time today. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to give you the notes. Amen. Now, now, if you don't guard your heart, the enemy can cause you to abort your plans. That's why you get the word, you guard it in your heart. And you don't allow the enemy to come in and abort your plans. Amen. Thirdly, you have to meditate on the word of God. Once you get it, you have to meditate. Now, I'll be talking in, in, the, in, in the next lesson on how you meditate. Meditation is really imagining yourself doing what God said you can do. Amen. Making that scripture come alive to you. Amen. If, look, look, look. If God says that wealth and riches shall be in your house, you have to meditate on that thing. Wealth and riches shall be in my house. So, so I built a big enough house to have a room for wealth and a room for riches. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then, then once I get the word, I get the word, I got to learn how to speak the word. Amen. Speak the word. Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life are in the power of your tongue. Amen. So, so if I don't learn how to speak life to my situations, 
You might have sickness in your body. Amen. You need to learn how to speak life into your body. Amen. That by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. He sent his word and delivered me and, 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 and from destruction. Amen. So, so I believe by faith that I'm healed. I'm the healed, resistant sickness and disease. Amen. So you got to learn how to speak the word. Amen. Then finally, once you get the word, you have to act on it. Somebody say act on it. Amen. Don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. James chapter one, verse number 22. Amen. Hallelujah. Now go to first Peter chapter five, first Peter chapter five. Now, if you choose by an act of your will, not to accept God's word as the final authority for your life, several things might happen to you. Now, hear me out. There is enough power in whatever God said to make whatever God said come to pass. Yeah. Amen. But if you choose not to accept what God says, it will never come to pass in your life. Amen. Now, now again, whatever God says, there's enough power to make it come to pass. So if God says that by his stripes we're healed, there's enough power in what God said to make it come to pass. Amen. If God says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. There's enough power in what God says to cause deliverance to come. Because that's what he said. Amen. You're in first Peter chapter five. Here's what happens when you choose not to accept God's word. First Peter chapter five. Look at verse number eight. First Peter chapter five. Verse number eight, look what he says here. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So if you don't accept the word as the final authority in your life, it positions you to be overtaken by the enemy. Amen. See, the devil, the devil will have a hard time overtaking you when you have the word. And you have the word in abundance in your heart. Because when he comes... You do what Jesus did. It is written. Yeah. Amen. No, 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 no. See, see, I, you need to learn how to be like Jesus. When the devil attacks you with situations and circumstances, you look at the circumstance and say, well, it is written. Yeah. And it is written and it is written. But you got to know that it's written. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you better know that it's written. Because because I, I found an ax, Monica, that, that was this guy. He didn't know the word. And the enemy came. And he said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? And he kicked that boy like a can down the road. Amen. But you got to know the word. Amen. Second thing that happens when you don't get the word, it, it will rob you of receiving the promises of God. See, the Bible is laced with what God promised the believer, those of us who would accept his will for our lives. There are so many promises that I can't go through today. Amen. But, but if you don't accept the word, you will not have the promise. God promises us long life. Yeah. Amen. And I don't care if in your family, everybody died at 65. That's not for you. Amen. You, you're supposed to live a long life. Why? Because that's what God promised me. Amen. And I, I keep on telling folk, I'm going to be here to 122. I know God gave said 120, but I, I just can't leave Sister Gwen here by herself. These vultures are coming, try to scoop her up. No, she coming with the, she coming with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. The next thing, the next thing that'll happen if you don't get the word of God, it will hinder the power of God from operating in your life. We, let me, let me tell you something. Just so you know, the power that raised Jesus from the dead is available to you right now. The same power. That raised Jesus from the dead is available to you right now. But if you don't know that, and if you don't believe that, then you won't operate the power that's given to you. Amen. You should not run from the devil. When the devil come in your face. No, 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 no. You got enough power to tell the devil, it's time for you to go. Amen. And so many believers are running away from the devil. They're running from him. When you ought to take authority over the devil. Amen. Praise the Lord. The next thing that happens when you don't accept the word as the final authority in your life, it'll rob you from being successful and doing things that have never been done before. <laughs> Who cares if, if, if nobody in your family were able to accomplish that? Yeah. That, that? That's between them and God. Yeah. 
See, see, the Bible says I can be successful if I meditate on the word day and night, keep the word in my heart and do what God said tells me to do. Watch this now. Then I'll make my way prosperous and then I'll have what? Good success. Well, watch this now. If you don't accept the word, you won't have the good success that God promised. Amen. Then watch this now. Then the final thing that happened, if you don't accept the word as the final authority for your life, amen, and, and, and put it in your heart, it will keep you from getting to a place that God promised. The children of Israel had an opportunity to get into the promised land in just a few days. God tells Moses, Moses, I want you to send some spies out to spy out the land. And I want you to verify that what I promise you is there. That I promise you a land that's flowing with milk and honey. And so Moses sends the 12 spies out. And uh, they come back with evidence. Somebody say evidence. evidence. So here they are with evidence that it is like God said. But 10 of the spies, they declare we're not able to go there. We're not able to get to the place where God promised us. Amen. The good land, the land flowing with milk and honey. We can't go. We can't go there. You know why? Because there are giants over there. There are obstacles over there and we cannot get there. And the reason why they couldn't get there is because they said this. We see ourselves as grasshoppers. Wow. Here's a land that God promised you. But because you don't see yourself like God sees you, you're going to miss out on the promise. But there were two other spies, Joshua and Caleb, that said, hold up a second. We don't see ourselves like that. We see ourselves as giant killers. We can go and possess the land. Why? Because God said we can have it. Amen. Who said that you are limited to the projects? Who said, who said that? Well, you know, this is just in my family. You know, we just, we've been here all this time. Who said that? God, God says he gives us houses and lands. Who, who, left, who left you with the impression that this is all you can have? It's because we don't hear the word. Amen. We miss out on the promise of God going to another place. Going to a place that's outside of our comfort zone. See, that, that's, what, that's what hurts many of us is because we're so comfortable with where we are. That if God ever challenges us to move to another level, we like, uh, 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 nope, nope, nope. Can't go there. Amen. That's why you got to change how you think. You got to change how you think. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, now, here's some things. Here's some things that you need to understand. God has to confirm his word. <laughs> God has to confirm his word. Mark chapter 16, verse 20. Just take a note of that. Mark 16, verse 20. Jeremiah 1, verse 12. Then you have to learn how to put pressure on the word of God. You have to tell God, God, this is what you said. Amen. You said, you said my children are like arrows in my hand that I could shoot them forward. Amen. And so it is my responsibility to shoot them forward. And I declare that over my children. Who praise the Lord. Amen. Thirdly, when you get the word of God, you set the stage for God to be glorified. Yeah. God's going to be glorified. When you start using this word, the Bible says that, that, that we are the light of the world. Amen. The salt of the world. The, amen. And that God will be glorified when people begin to see our good works. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Then when I get the word and operating in the word, I untie God's hands. Amen. Amen. Because he's trying to show off in somebody's life here and there. Could God, could God look at you and use you? Amen. As a product of. And an example in the earth to show that his word truly works. Amen. Sometimes I encounter traditional mindset preachers. And, and they cannot understand how we as a church family are able to do what we do. And I, and I just, I, I ask them the question, do you believe the word? Amen. See, God never put a criteria on mega church or any kind of church like that. You know, small church, big church, little church. God never put no criteria like that to get things done in earth. He just said, do you believe me? Do you believe that I could use you in order to affect the nations, to affect your city, 
to affect your country. Can, I, can, can you believe that, that, that you are the one I'm going to use? See, that's what happened with Moses. Moses said, God, don't you hear the cry of the children of Israel in bondage? God said, yeah, I hear him. I hear him. He said, well, what you going to do about it? He said, I'm going to send you. And Moses said, hold up and say, hold, hold, God, I didn't ask for all that. I just asked if you heard him. God said, yeah, I heard him. But I got to use somebody in the earth who will believe that, that, that I'm able to do through them what I need done in the earth. Amen. Because biblical believing, watch this now, biblical believing is to accept as fact that which I have no sense around evidence. God, I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe you. God, I, I don't know. I don't know who you're going to bring into my life and position in my life to be the contact that I need right now. God, I, I don't know. I don't know how, who they are, but God, you're going to raise up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence. God, I, 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 look, I don't know where the next meal is going to come from, but God, I know you, your word says, I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed. Bed. God, I don't know how you're going to do it. I, I, I don't know how you're going to heal me, but God, I, I know your word declares you're going to heal me. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I believe you. I don't need to see it with my eyes. God, I believe you. God, I don't, I don't need to verify it with my senses. God, I just, I believe your word. And God says, if I could find somebody like that, somebody who would just believe me beyond measure that I'm able to do it because my ability is never in question. All I need is just somebody, just one person. And God is asking today, is it you? Amen. Will you study the word enough? Will you get enough word in you that no matter what your situation is, no matter what your circumstance is, that God, I seen it in your word. I believe it. I, I, I don't know how you're going to do it, but, 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 but I, know, I know this. Your word says you know respect the persons. And what you've done for one, you got to do it for another in principle. Amen. So, God, I seen you heal them. So, God, you got to heal me. I seen you deliver them. I, God, you got to deliver me. I seen you raise that child up. So, you got to raise my child up. That's what the word says. So now what you going to believe? Amen. What you going to believe? You going to believe statistics and stereotypes? Or you going to believe the word of God? Man, they can find a statistic for anything these days. You can't do this because you're this. You can't do this because you're that. Da, 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 da. But then the word contradicts that and says, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. So what you going to believe? Well, well, well. You know, I, I, they, they told me, who told you? Who, who have you allowed to override God? Who have you allowed to override God? Because you just made them God. And God says, I'm a jealous God. And you should have no other God before me. Who have you allowed to be God in your life? To tell you what you can and cannot do. You can't go to Broadway. Who told you that? She's going to Broadway. Amen. What? Hey, if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believe. If thou canst believe. It don't matter what anybody else says. If you can believe. Amen. And I got to stop. Because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen.